Good to go. Okay, so this is our pension committee meeting for Monday, May 4th, 2020. Mike has taken the attendance. So we're gonna to go to item B on the agenda, which is the consideration of the minutes. So hopefully everybody's had a chance to review the minutes and I'd like to see someone who'd like to, any questions on the minutes? I'm not seeing any hand signals, so I'm guessing. I'll make a motion to pass the minutes. Okay, a motion by Anthony. I'll second the motion. And Karen. Karen uh, seconded the motion. All in favor, acknowledge by either saying aye or aye. raising your hand. Aye. Aye. Great, okay. Then that will bring us right up to our quarterly update with FIA with Chris Faulkner. Chris, are you there? I saw him earlier. He's here. Hold he's on. there. He's he's got to unmute himself. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to share the report just so that we can have that on the screen, Kathy. Okay. All right. If you can bear with me, Gary did this at the last meeting. Uh, I haven't done this yet, but I should <laughs> be able to figure it out. Isn't it part of the packet? Yes, it was in the packet. Yeah, I got it in front of me. Can people hear me? We yes. Can. Yes. yes, Chris. Yeah. Did that work? It's yeah, on, Mike. Okay. Sorry. Oh, that's not what it. I want, though. That's the budget. That's okay. Gary's budget presentation. No, we got it. We got it for Oh, you do? Yep. Oh, FIA see. report. It's on page right. 16. Yeah, if we can scroll back, Mike, to page three. Oh, it's over on my other monitor. Sorry. <laughs> Bear with me here. Am I moving that for you, Chris? Uh, that, that's. Are, are you seeing the pages change? No, you're this not. One blank. No, I'm seeing a blank screen right now. All right, hold on. This might be. I got somebody else trying to get in here. Can you see that report? I did. Yeah. yeah. Is that, are the pages changing? Yes. Okay. Sorry. So where do you want to go, Chris? If you go back uh, Mike, to page three of our report right there. Perfect. We'll start there for folks, then we'll make our way through select pages if no one objects. Uh, again, most importantly, we trust people to be safe and well and uh, surviving and managing the best that they can. Um, hey, Chris? Yes. Can I just... Uh, I'm just going to interrupt. We got, can I ask who's called in from the 203 number 996? Hello? Someone just called in by phone 203-996-1393. All right. All right. Hi, uh, yes. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just a member of the public. I'm just, oh, okay. I'm just listening. Thank you. You're all set, Chris. Oh, okay, good. So just to quickly on this page here, I think we had reminded folks back in the in beginning of the year on page three that we were moving forward and combining with a peer firm out in Chicago, DeMeo Schneider and Associates. Uh, despite all the noise and, and chaos in the markets in the quarter, we did close on that uh, combination. Um, at the end of the quarter, and you see the firms have now formally joined forces. 
Uh, we're doubling the size of our research team, building kind of a truly national scale, um, more technological capabilities and infrastructure and roughly $200 billion of, of client assets collectively under advisement. As mentioned there, we'll have uh, robust rep representation in, in the executive efforts of the firm. Um, you'll see little to no change. I continue to be the town's consultant the service team that's worked with me now for, in many cases, the better part of 10 years will continue to work with the town. Um, I, through time, as we come up with ideas and integrations and best practices, we'll gradually roll those out to the benefit of the town. But um, in the meantime, absolutely nothing changes with the way we engage with you folks and uh, the services we use, how we interact with Prudential or Mike or staff or, or anything whatsoever. It's all um, really kind of more of the same. Uh, if you scroll ahead in the report this quarter, before we get into the markets in the portfolio, just a quick reminder, this is the quarter in our fiduciary focus where we spend a little bit of time making sure we have a good uh, uh, understanding of the fees that are in the program and, and making sure that they're competitive. So we catalog for you beginning on or starting or summarized, I should say, on page seven, uh, the aggregation of the investment related fees. So as you all know, the bulk of the fees borne by the town plan are in the form of investment management fees to the third party investment managers. And you can see the arithmetic there on a weighted basis. Uh, the, the portfolio comes in somewhere as a little bit less than one half of 1%. And when we survey that number for like allocated and size plans to your own, um, I think that's a reasonably competitive number um, and one that, uh, uh, you know, it strikes a good combination of active and, and index management, as you know. Uh, Prudential uh, receives fees for providing administrative and custody support there uh, on the order of about um, four basis points. Uh, and then you see our kind of flat consulting fee there. It kind of encompasses everything that we do for you. That's the entirety of the uh, of the fee. So I think if you bring the math together and, and you'd find that it would be competitive with kind of peers and what we see elsewhere in the marketplace. So no action items for the committee this afternoon. We just wanted to give you that annual check-in on fees. So you've got that catalog um, and we've been assured ourselves collectively that we've had a conversation about it. Um, if you turn to the next page uh, of the report, page eight, uh, unfortunately for all of us, it was, it has been fairly trying times and it has certainly been trying times in the markets, as you know, I don't think we need to go into great detail of what happened. We'll share a couple of high level numbers momentarily, but, uh, you see in the upper right hand corner of the page, how significantly equity markets around the world re-rated, um, particularly in March as the health crisis really took hold and, um, you know, kind of set everything off on, on a, you know, on, on an otherwise kind of unanticipated foot, if you will. Uh, we had begun the year fairly constructive around the global economy. Um, and now we sit here, you know, a scant four, four or five months later and are talking about the recession and how deep it'll be and how long it'll be. Um, and we expect it'll probably not be until the end of the calendar year when we start to see some more consistent stability in the markets um, and in the economy. We're certainly in the throes of this crisis right now. I think as everyone knows, if you look at the bottom half of that same page, the response from the government has been really unprecedented. So whether it, um, you kind of center your perspective on the, on the CARES Act, and its breadth and its reach and its size uh, at over $2 trillion, or you look at what the Federal Reserve has done with supporting liquidity in the markets and reducing interest rates to effectively zero. Uh, in certain cases, it has been an, an immediate and a, and, a, and a response of a magnitude that the markets have never witnessed before. And that is certainly, we suspect, in some part, uh, responsible for somewhat of the you know, better markets in April that we've seen. Uh, and we'll talk about some of that in just a minute. Um, but the, really, there was no escaping, as you well know, what went on in the quarter. And you see on the next page, page nine of the report, 
just in summary fashion, what went on in global equity markets around the world. So I would focus your attention in the quarterly data there in the first column. Uh, and you can see really across the globe on the equity front, there really wasn't anywhere to hide. The downdrafts were pretty significant uh, and dramatic. Um, and again, really unprecedented with March being the most volatile month in um, the history of the markets. There were pockets of positive returns in the fixed income markets, most notably in government and treasury bonds. Uh, as we'll see in a minute, those are areas that the fixed income managers in the program tend to not do a lot of investment work in. It was a penalizing stance in the quarter, although it's been additive longer term. So the takeaway, I think, for everyone, without having to... Uh, you know, spend too much time, more time on this. It was obviously a very, very difficult quarter in the markets. Um, uh, and I'm gonna, in the interest of time, jump all the way ahead if no one objects, just quickly to a couple of other data points, starting on page 13. This is a, an exhibit I think that many folks in the, on the committee have seen in some form or fashion from us. It does speak to uh, the benefit of being disciplined and staying invested and reinvestigating the strategic targets and what our goals for the investment program are longer term uh, and see how detrimental it can be if you try to tie markets and miss just a couple of days in the markets. Uh, it can really start to extinguish your total return over the long haul. So this committee's always been very patient and I think very thoughtful and disciplined about that but it's a good reminder for all of us. And you see there on the bottom of that same page, um, even in the midst of all that chaos in March, some pretty dramatic up days in the markets too. Um, in some cases, north of 9% returns when uh, the world was seemingly coming to an end. So it does speak to the benefit of staying invested. Um, certainly retesting allocations and challenging the managers, but staying invested for the long haul nonetheless. And then finally, I'll skip ahead and show you on, because I thought it was interesting, we thought it was interesting on page 15. Uh, the metric here on the top of the page, uh, we've kind of extended previous bear markets here. Remember those are definitionally a 20% decline from the peak. You see, typically when we've had bear markets, it takes, um, more often than not, uh, a significant amount of time for those to take hold, um, typically on the order of months. Uh, as you can see in the exhibit, if you make it out there, you'll see in the, the green line, the February 20, the March market that we just experienced over in the far left of the graphic, um, how sharp and dramatic uh, and truncated, if you will, that downturn was. Um, markets do work their way back. Over time, right? We all know that and we've experienced that in the past. Uh, this market is really akin, as we'll see in a minute, to the one we collectively experienced in December of 2018. And then for some of you, you'll remember way back in the 2008 2009 crisis um, when things got really difficult as well. Um, but markets do begin to stabilize and come back. And you see those exhibits here on the bottom half of page 15 kind of redisplay, um, you know, the importance of being patient. So with that, um, I'm gonna jump ahead to page, uh, bear with me here, I'm kind of going along, page 17 with the display of the portfolio um, at the end of uh, March. A couple of things to note here for the um, for the committee. Uh, we did work with Michael and the Prudential folks uh, toward the back half of March and did some thoughtful rebalancing back into targets. As you can appreciate what was going on in the markets, we did take a little bit out of fixed income and redeploy those monies into equities. That was a uh, proved to be an accretive stance, right? Because equities in the month of April have done much better than bonds. So I think that discipline of rebalancing was um, important and necessary and, and worked out well. Uh, you don't see it displayed on the page here. I'm sure Lisa has a figure too, but I think when I look Thursday night, uh, the plan was at about $91.3 million. 
uh, versus the 84.7 you see displayed here. And again, that's a byproduct of uh, some double digit returns in the equity markets in the month of April. So the portfolio has, as we would expect, um, performed much better and participated in that updraft um, uh, as uh, kind of, again, as expected. I think the, otherwise the roster managers, right, can, and the larger allocation continue to be appropriate for what we're trying to achieve in the program uh, longer term. Uh, so I don't have more to add on the allocation or manager front. Um, there is no, uh, you know, no hiding or blushing from the fact that it was the most difficult quarter we've had in quite some time in the program. You'll see that on page 18. Um, we alluded to this in the, uh, the meeting with the volunteer firemen a little bit. Um, so obviously a, a, a really difficult quarter down 18% um, and behind the benchmark is a, a number of the managers struggled um, in the environment, March in particular to keep pace. Um, you know, we do see there, right? I can always remind ourselves these endpoint numbers sometimes can be um, telling and they're certainly important. But look down at the calendar years, right? It does kind of prove what we talked about with this group, one, two, three, four, five, I think six of the eight years plays, uh, are presented down at the bottom of that page. The portfolio is outperforming the benchmark. We have every expectation on a go forward basis that we'll start to revert back to that type of result. Um, but no blushing again from the fact that it was, it was an awful quarter uh, in the markets. Uh, and it was not a particularly good quarter for the managers either. But as I say that and, and, and think about it, um, again, just informally here in the month of April, uh, your equity managers are up, domestic equity managers are up anywhere from nine and a half to over 12% in the month of April alone. Your international managers are up respectively five, six percent. The bond managers have stabilized. Um, so we're pretty confident that again, as things start to settle down, that the portfolio will start to revert back to what it's been as history, right? And that's been the managers generally by and large, obviously Q1 being a notable exception, but otherwise by and large uh, being able to add value over the long haul. So I think we'll get back to that longer term as well. Um, but uh, I, I didn't want to, uh, I didn't want to stand away from the fact that it was really a very difficult quarter, um, you know, and something we were certainly aware of and monitoring. And we, as you know, continually engage with your managers, your third party managers uh, on our research front and, and talk to them all the time and regularly and we underwrite them. And I think we're, we're still in good working order. Um, and again, or overlapping the rebalancing activity that we undertook with Mike and Prue, um, you know, those disciplines that you've kind of built and developed and endorsed through time have, have more recently proven to be uh, pretty effective on um, keeping us on somewhat of an even keel as things begin to stabilize, hopefully. Uh, so with that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause. I know I, I threw a lot at you and you know if that folks had questions on either the markets, the allocation, the managers, um, anything uh, that you may have a concern about, happy to entertain questions on. Sounds like Mike or Kathy were okay with folks okay or? It seems it. Yeah. We'll, we'll stick around if something else come up. But other than that, uh, that was what we had in terms of presented material. All right, so hearing and seeing nobody has questions, we'll move on to item D, the Prudential Quarterly Report update from Lisa. Great, thank you, Kathy. Are you able, is everybody able to hear me? Yep. 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 Great, terrific. All right, well, hello everybody. Nice to see you. I wished we were in person. Um, Chris gave some uh, indication prior as to what the balances were at the end of the quarter. As you can see here, we were at $84.7 million uh, with their, you know, the largest holding being in that the Vanguard um, followed by the uh, Core Plus Bond Prudential Fund. 
Uh, Chris, you must have checked on Wednesday or Thursday when the market was up, when the balance was 91, because after the close of the market on Friday, we were back to 89. Uh, mm -hmm. So this plan does have about $89 million in it. Markets closed up slightly today, so hopefully we continue to see an uptick there. Um, Kathy or Mike, I, I apologize, I don't know who's driving. If you could just go to the next page, that'd be great. Mike, Mike's got this. The... Oh, perfect, thanks Mike. Um, so for the quarter, what we can see is I'm looking on the second line there over to the right. We saw, unfortunately, the beginning market value was $104 million. So that's where you really can see the hit that you took over the quarter. Um, there were $1.519 million of receipts into the plan and 1.762 disbursements out of the plan. You can see each quarter there were distributions out around the five or $600,000 mark. Um, take into account the market value change, which was quite hefty, and we were left with our ending market value of $84.7 million. Any questions on that? And then just one more page. I like to show every year where we are year over year. Um, and so, as I mentioned, this year we ended the quarter 84.7, which again, we're up to 89. But this time last year, we were much higher at 96.6. So we'll keep our fingers crossed that the market continues to increase so we can get back and make up some of those, those losses. But otherwise, really kind of a quiet quarter. Uh, nothing stood out to me. Just uh, typical and traditional transactions that happened in the plan. That's all I had, unless there's any other questions for Prudential. Anyone with questions? Great, thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Okay, without any further questions then, we're gonna move on to the agenda item E, <clears throat> just to look at the documentation of the following requests that the finance department process. Any comments, Mike, or are we all set? Nope, those are just included for informational purposes, Kathy. And they, you know, they don't need to be read or anything. They're Everyone's got the, got the agenda. Okay. Then that moves us to item F, which is new business. Does anybody have any new business that they'd like to bring up? I'm just taking a little longer getting used to in case anybody has to unmute or something. Then I would go on to item G, any old business. Again, I'm not hearing anything. Then if, if this is where we're at, I didn't entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved, Harry. Okay, a second. I'll second. And who's that? Karen. 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 Yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Then the meeting is concluded. Thank you all for very much for coming into this um, unique way of teleconferencing. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Everybody. Thank you. Have a good Stay night. Well. Take it easy. Yeah, you too. Stay healthy. Bye.